Welcome back then to another quickie with quads and I know a lot of you guys have recently got hold of a new drone and for the purpose of this particular video we are going to look at the mini series of drones. This is a DJI Mini 4 Pro, there's a Mini 3, the Mini 2, the Potenzic Atom, there's a Holy Stone HS900 I think I reviewed last year. There's quite a few sub 249 gram drones now that are actually really good. But you may have also got yourself a Mavic 4 Pro or a Mavic 3. It doesn't matter. The point is this video is aimed at new flyers to these things. There's a misconception and I sort of agree that it probably should be a thing to be fair. That when you open up the DJI Fly app, if you're not allowed to fly somewhere, it will tell you. And although back when I first started, there were zones and things within there that would tell you what you could do and what you couldn't do. That's since gone by the wayside. And DJI have said, well, look, we're not going to be responsible for managing and administering this. It needs to go on the regulators because it's not us that's saying it. Totally understand it. Totally get it. But that does leave new pilots in a bit of a quandary because they get the new drone, they go out and fly, and the police stop them because they're flying somewhere they shouldn't. And they open up the DJI Fly app and it doesn't say anything because it doesn't. I mean, there are certain areas that it will warn you of, but the areas that it warns you of really are areas that you probably should know not to fly anyway, because you're going to have to read the drone code and get yourself an operator ID. And that was what I was covering with my finger there. So that's tip number one. If you're brand new to camera drones, you need to get yourself an operator ID. It's not a license. It's almost like a permissions of such. And it goes against the operator of the drone. So whoever's flying it is not necessarily the operator, but you do need to know what the drone code is. Now, this video is mainly for people in the UK, in fairness. There are different apps and things in America, but what I've noticed a lot of on social media recently is comments like this one here. And it says, what app are you using to see these restrictions? It's not on the DJI Fly app. And have, I've seen loads and loads and loads and loads of these, and it's not the pilot's fault. It's easy to blame. Oh, it's DJI pilot's fault. You know, they don't know what they're doing. They should fly a proper drone. That's not what we're about here. But let's try and educate and help them and stop them getting themselves into a wee bit of bother. So if you're in the UK, you're going to need to download an app on your phone or your tablet called drone assist now then so obviously you're going to want to go to the app store obviously i'm using the samsung s25 ultra as we partnered with samsung recently as i mentioned in the previous video a review of this device is coming and coming pretty soon uh, i've got the screen recorder on so you'll be able to see what i'm actually doing as well so you type in drone assist and it will bring you up a few different apps, but the one you're looking for is this. And again, I'll put it on the screen, but the one you're looking for is this, Drone Assist Flight Planning. Now, I've obviously already got it installed because I'm a good boy. And if we click open, so what you will see on Drone Assist is this. And this is the area that you are either in or you've scrolled to because you want to fly. And you can now see on there, there's all different sorts of colors. Some are more prevalent than others. Some will make a lot more sense than others, but let's go through and explain it a little bit to you so that you don't get yourselves on the wrong side of the law accidentally. First of all, we'll have a look at Manchester and we'll scroll all the way in to Manchester city centre. Now there is two, as we can see, there is two highlighted red zones there. One of them should make perfect sense what it is and why you can't fly it for anybody with a little bit of local knowledge. And that says, strange ways for anybody that doesn't know that's a prison you can't fly a drone over a prison why can't you fly a drone over a prison because these things have been used to drop drugs into prisons pretty obvious really when you think about it but if you didn't know there you go if we click on the strange ways it actually gives us we've got two red warning zones now that could mean we've got two no fly zones or flight restriction zones to give them the proper name but it might not necessarily mean that. And this is why it's important to have this app and to understand it and to read what it says. We'll read the Strange Ways one first. So HMP Strange Ways or HMP Manchester tells us that approval is required 
And if you go to summary and restrictions, it then tells you basically this. So vertical limits is the one you want to read. And it says this restriction, this piece of airspace is in effect from the surface to 600 feet above ground level. Now, why is that important? Well, you can only fly your drone up to 400 feet above ground level and from the surface. So what does that mean? Well, that means that that whole piece of airspace that you're allowed to fly in is completely blocked in this area that's highlighted red, dark red now because we've selected it. So that means you cannot fly anywhere. Now, there are some flight restrictions that are highlighted on here so that you're aware of them. But if for things like helicopters, and we'll start at, say, 2,000 foot, up to, say, 6,000 foot. Let's have a look at this one in the whole of Manchester. So EGR319 is a restricted area. Now, initially, you're going to look at that and you're going to think, what's this? What's it for? And this piece of airspace restriction for the whole of Manchester. So the restriction area. Oh, yes, that that. I thought they'd changed it. They haven't done. So initially, you're going to think, well, I can't fly in the whole of Manchester City Centre because it tells me from surface to 1,700 feet, I can't fly. If we scroll down to the bottom, and I'll highlight it on the screen now for you, it actually says the restriction area only applies to helicopters. Flight permitted by any helicopter operator in this airspace or on behalf of the police, da 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 so it initially looks like you can't. But actually, it says the restricted area applies only to helicopters. So looking at the Castlefield one, and you'll see that actually it tells you that it's just a warning symbol for a crane operation. And it gives you the dates of when it is and where it is. Sometimes it'll give you the heights and, uh, you know, all the information is there for you to make a safe judgment as to whether or not you need to fly, whether or not it's safe for you to fly, and whether or not you want to continue with your planned flight. But Drone Assist is a really valuable uh, resource for anybody who's flying. Now, this comes down to whether you fly an FPV, which this channel's main focus is, or whether you fly in a camera drone. It doesn't matter. The regulations and restrictions are there for everybody. And I do know that some FPV pilots get a bad rep for uh, for saying we'll just send it or we'll just do this or we'll just get the other. The truth of the matter is that there are idiots in both sides and there are people who are more secure in uh, following the restrictions and regulations on both sides. But you're always going to get idiots, are you? And it's the idiots that you're going to see more of. Um, you know, I've had debates with people in the past that have said, oh, well, I've got to follow all these regulations, but FPV pilots never do. Far from it. Far, far from it. The problem with an FPV pilot is if you get caught doing something wrong, it's a lot more dangerous than a camera drone. So you are going to suffer a bigger consequence for it. So follow drone assist. Now, the other question that does get asked loads on drone assist is, I've taken my drone out. I've gone on a holiday. I've gone to the coast. We are an island nation surrounded by coastal waters and all around the coast, it's in yellow and it says it's an SSI and I might not be able to fly. So I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to leave the drone in the caravan or the hotel and I'm not going to bother. And these people are really missing out. And the reason these people are really missing out is because what they're doing is they're looking at drone assist. They're seeing that it's yellow and they're thinking, oh, it's not worth it. The truth of the matter is, Look at the summary, and I'll put it on the screen now, but look at the summary as to why it's an SSSI. The reason I say that is I had real issues with one particular place that said, we have an SSSI, so you're not allowed to fly, it's against the law. And it's because we've got trees. What? My, my camera drone is going to affect your trees? Yes, the protected trees. Brilliant. I'm not going to crash into them, don't worry. Long story short, I flew, they came out, we had a big argument. Um, I wish I'd have recorded it, to be honest. I really, really do. Just for educational purposes, not because I want to be an auditor or anything like that. I'm really not my style. But it would have been a good educational video. And ultimately, the long and the short of it was that they have an SSSI to protect trees from damage. And flying a drone over a tree is not going to cause damage to it. So therefore, 
there are no restrictions in this particular area. However, go and look at this particular one on Drawn Assist and you'll see coastal waters and you'll see a coastal path. And on this, it mentions nesting birds and that you can't disturb nesting birds during nesting season. Now, again, if you click on it, open it up, view the full details, it should give you the dates of nesting season. It doesn't always, sometimes you've got to Google it. Does that mean that you can't fly? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. What it means is you cannot disturb them. So if, for example, you was to get your drone up out of the way, 400 foot and out to sea, for uh, as an example, and the SSSI is on the cliff, but you're on the beach, so the cliff is there, you're on the beach, and you've flown out to the ocean that way, you're not disturbing the nesting birds that are there even though you are in an SSSI. So you've, you've got to use due diligence. You've got to use a little bit of common sense. And what I see sometimes is people either, people on both sides of the coin, isn't it? So it's either YOLO, I'm just going to send it. And I do joke about sending it. You'll all know from how I fly, that's not actually the case. Anybody that's ever flown with me knows I'm quite a, a boring, diligent, bogger when it comes to rules and regulations but then you've got the other side of people that think well there's a warning and a restriction there and i'm not going to risk it but i really would like to get that boat that's out at sea over there read what drone assist says understand it and if you're not sure ask because you might be missing out on doing a completely legal activity but if you're not sure just ask like i say there's there's drone groups on facebook i've got a discord link shameless plug link down below if you're not sure come in and ask it's not a problem we're here to help now like i said the majority of this video is aimed at, at people who are in the uk but there are things like this app in america and other countries i think in america it might be called before you fly i think unless it's recently changed i'm not 100 percent sure um, but there are there are apps there, um, or it lands, I believe, as well. So you can get your lands authorization if you're in an area that you need to get authorization from. You can just do it all through the app. And again, on drone assist as well, just because it's a flight restriction zone doesn't mean you can't fly. I flew uh, last week in Barton Aerodrome. For anybody that doesn't know the area, Barton Aerodrome is just outside of the Trafford Centre in Manchester. And... It's where the police fly in. It's full of light aircraft constantly landing all day long. And I had a request to grab some footage of something up there. I can't discuss it at the minute. And it was in the flight restriction zone. So does that mean I can't fly? No, it doesn't. It means I can't just turn up and fly. But on drone assist, and I'll bring it up on the app. Now, what you can do with certain aerodromes is you can log into them. You can tell them what you want to do, when you want to do it, how high you want to do it, what you're flying and the reason, and they'll approve it. And I've got to say, the majority of aerodromes and airports will go out of their way to authorize it for you. Yeah, of course, there are going to be some that, are, that won't because either you're too close to them or you're too close to the flight path or whatever. Where I was at Barton Aerodrome, it was off to the side. So if you can sort of imagine it a little bit in your head, the aerodrome was there. So sort of flights were coming in this way and that way. And I was sort of here, if you like, off to the side of it. It was still my, res my responsibility to make sure that if an aircraft came in, I wasn't anywhere near it. So I still had to have eyes everywhere in the sky. Now, you don't need a spotter when you're flying a camera drone. But in a situation like that, I'd always recommend that you've got more than one pair of eyes because you're going to want to do your filming. You need to keep an eye on it visually as well. So you need to be flicking between the two. That's another thing as well. Visual line of sight doesn't mean you have to look at it all the time. What it means is when you look up in the sky and somebody says, where is that drone? You have to be able to point it out instantly, not go, um, hang on a second. It's here and here. So it's a, there. You've got to be able to be looking down at your controller like this and then all of a sudden say there. That's what visual line of sight means. And that's a, a misunderstood rule quite often. If it flies behind a building and you say, well, I've got visual line of sight because I know it's behind that building. You don't have visual line of sight. The reason for that is if it flies behind that building and another drone is coming that way, can you see that other drone? No, because it's behind the building. You have a crash, it falls on people. You don't have visual line of sight. So you have to be able to physically see it in the air. 
technically, according to regulations, you'll have to be able to see the direction the drone is headed as well so that you can fly it back to you instantly without checking what position the camera is on your app or wiggling the joystick to see which direction it is. That's another story for another day. But that is a quick visual line of sight or VLOS rules that you may hear people saying. Uh, as of yet, it is completely illegal to fly beyond visual line of sight. So that's something to bear in mind. That's why in FPV, we use LEDs on everything because it makes it 10 times easier for the spotter to be able to see it. You can then do a little bit more than what you could normally do, especially with the smaller craft. But well, that's a quick overview of Drone Assist and SSSIs. If you've got any questions, please do drop them in the comments down below because I do know that this can be a really confusing topic for a lot of people. Ultimately, the regulations on Drone Assist are there for all drones, sub-250 or not. Bear that in mind as well. SSSIs doesn't mean that you can't fly them, and if you're not sure, please ask. There are plenty of people out there like myself that are more than willing to help answer your questions. And of course, the most important thing in all of this is get out, go and fly your drone, do it safely, but make sure you have some fun. Till next time, peace out, everybody.